Today, we're gonna upgrade this Rainbird ESP modular controller to a Hunter HPC smart controller so that the homeowner can monitor and access their irrigation system remotely. Before we can get started here, we're gonna have to turn off the power. Clearly, the power is on because the controller is responding to commands. We're looking at the power coming in. It's going over to this pool panel over here. And it's entirely possible that it goes right through into another panel, but we're going to open this up and see if by some miracle they left the sprinkler timer, which would be this one. Now the controller says no AC, which means no alternating current power going to the controller. That is our shutoff. So we can go ahead and now remove this controller off the wall to make room for the new controller. All right, with the power turned off, we'll start taking apart the parts of the controller that are easy to take out like those and we're going to double check that the power is in fact turned off i know the breaker's off so about 99.9 .9 sure i've said this in past videos i'll say it again the only way to be 100 percent sure is to use a tool like this we're dead baby we're ready to go so we can go ahead and pull all these wires out safely pull off all the wire nuts it's not going to make a difference because the power is off go ahead and save these wire nuts over here and one other thing that I like to do, and I'm gonna stop the camera to do this, is I'm gonna take a photo of the wires here because I need to know how these were set up because when I go to set up the new controller, I want it to be in exactly the same order. This is what the customer is used to using their system as. So when they turn on zone two, the same zone will come on as it did before I removed the controller and put on the new controller. Let me grab my camera, take a picture of this. And now I can use that picture to let me know where to put those wires. Now there's a lot of different colors in here, so I'm gonna have to find another way to mark the rest of them. But we'll go ahead and get the power wire disconnected completely, like that. The lock nut to the side. We've also got a rain sensor in here, so we'll go ahead and disconnect the rain sensor. Generally speaking, rain sensors are gonna get connected the same way, so I don't really need to remember how this was connected, although it will be in my photo that I just took, so in case I didn't remember, I can find it. I do like that the person who installed this actually took the time to wrap the wires around the 24 volt cables. I find so many times that somebody just slides the wire right next to it in the screw and they try to tighten it down and then the rain sensor doesn't work because it's not making a full connection. This person tied it around there. When I go to install it on the Hunter controller, I'll be doing the same thing because I want it to stay there. So, all right, rain sensor is disconnected, power is disconnected. The only thing left to do is get the controller wires and I just have to remember from my photo what they all do. So what you're seeing me do right now is I'm putting these little mini loops in the first color of each wire that's being used. So in this case, this was the first red being used, this was the first green being used, this was the first blue being used. Although I'm starting to notice that I can tell the difference between the blues. And then my brown is my master. And then the rest of these colors are not being reused with the exception of this one yellow wire right here. So we'll go ahead and put a little loop in that one. So now I'll remember when I go to look at my photo of the two yellows or the two oranges, which one was the first one? And then the three wires I'm not using, they're not cut or they're cut, but they don't have tips on them. So that's how I'm going to remember that. You're not going to see me use screws like this with the anchors on them because I use concrete anchors. Also, the holes in this controller don't match up with the new controller, so we wouldn't be able to reuse these holes anyway. And just like that, it's off the wall. Now I'm going to get a couple more, like this anchor's got to go. I'll get that last screw out there and then push it right in. All right. We have to do a little bit of preparing with our new HydroWise controller because in northern markets, they don't hire, or maybe they do, but uh, they don't hardwire them in northern markets, maybe? I don't know. Either way, in Florida, we hardwire 99.9% .9 of our controllers. The 1% of the controllers it doesn't get are usually installed inside of a garage, and those do get plugged in. As you can see, we're outside, so garage installation is not gonna happen here. This is also a 10 zone system. And in this particular clock or controller, in order to install the extra modules, you need to turn off the controller or unlock the module bar. And we can slide in the necessary modules to bring this to a 10 zone system. It's a great thing about modular controllers. They're set up for whatever you need them for. Toss the whole whip to the side. 
I don't need any of that stuff. What I do need is for this and this to line up. So I'm going to need to run these wires real quick, just one time inside of here, so that I can figure out where my set screw is gonna go. And that's gonna be the screw that's going up here at the top. And before I get into all that, I always look at that screw and get it all set up and nice and straight, and then turn around to realize I don't have the drill set up for the hole that I need to drill. So before I go and straighten all that up, let's get the drill set, make sure it's in hammer drill mode, and that out of our way. We still gotta be able to reach this. That's straight. This looks like a good spot for it, so we're gonna go ahead. So what I do, I mark the hole right above where it needs to get marked. And then I just reference. I need that hole to be that much further down than where I have it on the wall, which is approximately exactly right here. And if I can get my bit to stop walking around on the wall, that's that. We'll go ahead and get our screw tip and put our screw in. All right. The controller does come with a paper. I choose not to use it because I've been installing these controllers this way for a long time and it works for me. However, if you want to use that paper, it is made for you to use it to figure out where the holes need to go for the rest of the mounting screws. For me, that's exactly where that needed to go. And then the only other thing I need to worry about is making sure the controller is straight, which we're there. And of course, my drill is set up for screw gun and not drilling. But now I'm just going to drill two more holes. There is a third hole at the bottom, so maybe I'll do all three of them. And I'll show you what I do here is that once I get this leveled where I want it, I don't drill straight because I'm not going to fit my drill in there when that comes time to put the screw in. I drill crooked because when it comes time to put the screw in, I'll be able to fit my drill in there. And because I drilled those holes crooked, I will be able to screw in my screws crooked. And I won't damage the controller trying to get my screws in there. I've done that before and it sucks. What the hell? My phone overheated? You gotta be kidding me. Well, you guys missed the part where I wired in the power and I brought the wires into the new controller and put on the lock nut and then coiled the ground or the uh, common wire. That's all you've missed. I was going to stop my phone because I took that photo of the wires and now I need to reference that photo so that I can wire up the controller. And I'm gonna do that now and then we'll pick this video back up once I've got this wired in order the way I want it and we'll show you how we wire in the rain sensor after that. But we're gonna let the, cool, the phone cool down a little bit in the meantime, because I didn't know that it could overheat that easily. All right, there you have it. We've got all 10 zones wired in. You can see my coils that I always like to put in. You can also see that I put the extra wires in their own coil over here, and we're getting ready to install the rain sensor. I did drill a small hole about the same size as the black wire to pull it through down there so that we can go ahead and start wiring it into where it goes. I removed the 24 volt sticker from above the three screws here so that we can go ahead and t disconnect these two yellow wires and do just like we saw on the red wires from the previous controller and wire these directly into those, like twist them and then put them back under the screw. So let's go ahead and get that done. I'm gonna go ahead and leave my camera here on the tripod and just pray that mother nature doesn't decide to kill it again like it did last time. So I'll go ahead and start by loosening the two yellow wires from the transformer pull those out. On this particular model, we want the black and the red. The black and the red are going to get connected with these two yellow wires. All right. Now with the wires twisted like that, we can go ahead and stick them right back under their screws. And because I pulled them out without unscrewing the screw a whole bunch, it's going to be harder to get it back in. All right. So we backed off the screw so we can get it in there. Screwed it in. We're good to go. We do the same thing with this one. Get back in there. Open it up, slide it in, close it down. All right. All right, now that we got that where we want it to go, we're gonna go ahead and connect the white wire to the rest of these white wires, which will be our common wire for the solenoid. Or solenoid, listen to me. For the sensor, we'll twist these wires together so that they don't come back apart. And then we'll stick all three of these wires under the common screw. Remember, your system is only as strong as your weakest wire connection. Twist your wires. Don't just put them next to each other. All right, we got that in there. Now all that's left to do is connect the sensor wire to send, well, this used to say send one, but to send. We'll go ahead and connect that to here. And all of a sudden, I'm doing left-handed screwdriving because I'm not switching my hands around. 
All right. And with that being said, this controller is totally wired in. We're just going to go ahead and put the base plate back on like that. Oops, like that. After it clips in, plug in our little wire here. Door. And it's hot as hell in Florida, so we're going to take a 10-minute break, and then we're going to come back and program that.